We're here to talk about Tecmera's lipid nanoparticle sRNA-based drugs and our development uh, through phase one clinical trials for, well, I think we're going to focus on the APOB trial today. So for those of you who are unfamiliar, um, Tecmera's stable nucleic acid lipid particles, which we call SNELP, that would be our proprietary brand of lipid nanoparticles. We, I think for my presentation today, I'll be interchangeably using the term LNP and SNELP. These are wet preparations. They are ready to use liquid formulations that consist of the sRNA, the active um, pharmaceutical ingredient in a lipidic colloidal dispersion. Now, Tecmera's technology is modular. We have anywhere from two to, I think, some of our formulations have six lipid components. Um, and we generally try to target the particle size being about 80 nanometers in diameter, but we can go, I think, as low as, I think I've seen some data with 45 nanometer particles. Now, the modularity of this system allows for a great deal of control for the physical characteristics, and of course, um, that will control the pharmacokinetics and the uh, pharmacology of these particles. So these are uh, uncharged particles in, at physiological pH. We do use PEG coating, which is diffusible. Um, and the primary, uh, I guess you could say, actor with regards to the lipid composition is the amino lipid, which is pH titratable. Um, this Cryo-T-E M image on this side shows you that the particles that are manufactured using our continuous blend process are very uniform. Um, I think these ones are about 80 nanometers as well. And what might be interesting for folks who are more familiar with liposomes is that you can see clearly here that there is no unilaminar structure. These are essentially, um, I guess some people want to use emulsions, but there's all these loud discussions about whether we can use word emulsions, but that's why we stick with lipid nanoparticle. So at this moment, um, I think we're very pleased to tell you that the LNP systems uh, that Tecmira manufactures are actually, there's four of them in phase one, uh, or, or that have completed phase one. Most of the data I'll be showing today is on TKM APOB, which is for high cholesterol. We have also, um, our partners have also completed a trial at liver cancer, and they're currently um, working on one in TTR amyloidosis. We are currently also uh, conducting a cancer trial with uh, PLK1. So the APOB trial, this was a phase one first in human trial, was placebo controlled, single blind, and single ascending dose. Of course, the focus was on safety and tolerability, but we also were interested in valuing the pharmacokinetics of these drugs and ideally getting some hint of a look at the, pharmaco uh, the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. These were in healthy volunteers, male and female subjects with elevated cholesterol. SNELP uh, is intravenously administered and it uh, makes its way through the body to the target tissue, the liver in this case. It's taken up into the target cell type, which is the hepatocyte in this case. And the lipid particle, um, as the endosome matures and the pH drops, will fuse with the membrane of the, en of the endosome and deposit its siRNA payload into the cytoplasm where it can have its intended drug effect. The sRNA gets taken up to risk, and through the pathway of, inter of RNA interference, can degrade the target mRNA. When we target APOB, the mRNA degradation uh, results in a reduction in the amount of APOB protein that is produced by the hepatocyte, and thus the amount of uh, VLDL that is produced by the liver. You can uh, monitor this very easily in a clinical situation by evaluating LDL cholesterol and, of course, total cholesterol. And we actually also see uh, effects in triglycerides in our animal models. So, to our first in human trial. This was not only the first in human trial for Proto 40201, which is the lipid formulation. This was actually also the first, hum first in human trial for uh, Tecmira's, at that time, relatively new family of LNP, so we were very excited with this trial. Um, 
In addition, this was single dose, unlike oncology trials, which are usually multi-dose. And I think for us, a, a very key factor was that this was going to be in healthy human volunteers. And so the placebo was actually extremely important for us. We included one placebo patient, sorry, subject, in each of seven cohorts. We started with a low dose of 0.01 milligrams per kilogram, and we had seven cohorts planned all the way up to one milligram per kilogram. Uh, the intravenous administration was in a fairly small volume, 50 milliliters in saline, over 10 minutes. So how did we do? Actually pretty good. Uh, our primary endpoint being safety and tolerability, um, it was very important for us to demonstrate that ApoB snuff was very well tolerated overall. We saw no evidence of liver toxicity, which was the primary toxicity um, indicated by our preclinical models, which were mouse and non-human primates. We also saw no injection site reactions. <coughs> we did stop our trial uh, after the second patient, that second subject, um, who received 0.6 <coughs> milligrams per kilogram. There was an AE of flu-like symptoms consistent with, consistent with immune stimulation. I'll talk a little bit more about this adverse event in subject 190. This was a 53-year-old patient with mildly elevated hypercholesterol, hypercholesterolemia, um, and this was the second subject in this cohort. So there was one other subject that had been treated with absolutely no adverse effects observed. Um, so our second patient did tolerate the infusion well. There was no acute infusion reaction in this subject. However, two and a half hours after receiving their injection, we started to feel a report of feeling wobbly in the legs. And at about four hours after administration, um, experienced a case of rigors, vomiting, a fever, and hypotension and hypoxia. Uh, the attending physician did give a number of treatments. The fever was quickly self-limiting and resolved within three hours. Um, the blood pressure actually resolved somewhat later, so I think we started the administration in the morning and all the symptoms had resolved by the evening. Now the patient maintained perfect cognition through this episode, felt normal at night, and was dis dis discharged home the next day as per protocol. So this event was described as moderate in severity and related to study drug. I want to spend much more time looking at um, the follow-up to this adverse result. Of course, it was extremely important to us to understand as much as we could about this event. So as I mentioned before, no liver toxicity. So we'll leave that out of the picture. The other laboratory results um, all occurred within about a 24-hour period. Most of these were, re were resolved within the 24-hour period. And they included uh, a neutrophil increase fairly early, about the same time um, as cytokine elevations. I'll go into the um, cytokines a little bit more in a bit. And all these peaked at around six to eight hours. The C-reactor protein uh, elevation was also expected with the cytokines and it was observed that peak was a little later, but it was definitely raised by six hours. Now, the types of cytokines that were observed were very interesting. First of all, there was no interferon alpha response. Um, our understanding of siRNA immune stimulation, certainly unmodified normal RNA bases, is that interferon alpha is involved because there's TLR7 involvement. So we did not observe this in the clinic, which I think made us feel somewhat justified in that we had modified the siRNA already, and so we had knocked out this particular response. However, we still observed TNF and particularly IL-6 increases. And so possibly, and we're certainly studying this quite a bit, some other um, receptors were involved. So this is a scatter plot showing um, data from all the subjects in the trial at six hours post-administration. IL-6 on the top, TNF-alpha on the bottom. TNF uh, elevation was actually relatively minor. IL-6 was much more major. The red dot indicates the subject with the adverse response. So there was a lot of head scratching. Certainly, um, we had done a lot of work prior to starting this first in human trial, of course. And we had already known that if we had not 
chemically modified with two primal methyl, two primal methyls, the sRNA, SI equal B8, we would have a problem. But we had already modified it, and this modified sRNA looked wonderful through um, an extensive panel of uh, preclinical studies for immune stimulation. Not only did we look at complement activation, adaptive immune responses, we spent a lot of time particularly looking at cytokines, and so we used a number of uh, models, including human PBMC assay, another in vitro assay in murine uh, dendritic cells, and then of course our full-on GLP studies in vivo in mouse and in NHPs. All these assays indicated that it would be safe to proceed into the clinic. So clearly they were not good enough. We needed to have a new assay to, recapit to recapitulate the clinical experience. To cut a fairly long and involved story short, we found one, and it was really interesting. Um, we always knew that dendritic cells, um, PPMC fraction, was going to be uh, a, a, really a key player, a, a key suspect in this. And even though in our in, um, pre-IND studies we saw no effect in the PPMC fraction, we could actually, if we used whole blood, reconstitute something that looked like the adverse response that we observed in the clinic. Um, you can see this both in TNF and IL-6, which are the markers that we showed you the data for for the clinical situation. Now, it was very interesting in coming to this um, assay, which I don't have time to describe in detail, but the whole blood um, had to be, I guess, um, used in a very specific way. It needs to be fresh, and we could only get the best results when we collected in heparin tubes. Citrate was not usable, and we tried a number of other uh, anticoagulants, and they did not give good results. I'll skip over this, but if folks are interested in the protocol, um, we certainly can make it available to people. So once we had this assay, one of the first things that we wanted to understand is whether there was something very specific about this SI equal P8, or whether this cryptic immunostimulation was something that could be observed in other um, modified sRNAs. And the answer was yes. In some cases, you got no response, but in other cases, you did see a cryptic response. And there were many ways that we could use to get around this, but we went with a simple one and simply said, if we're using some 2 prime all methyl modifications, um, perhaps more would be better. It's simplistic, and in the end it was empirical, because we tried quite a number of modifications, and they had variable responses. We, in the end, we picked, uh, using the addition of efficacy experiments as well, obviously, uh, this 3 slash 5, which turns into SIPP10, which is our new lead sRNA. One thing that I glossed over earlier was um, the role of the LNP in this uh, immune stimulation. So I think it would be very wrong to say that the immune stimulation is all due to the sRNA. It is a property of the sRNA, but it can be potentiated by the LNP you choose to use. So in this case, the SNAP that we went to the clinic with um, had a cationic lipid that we called the LINMA. And in conjunction with the LINMA, SIPB8 is a very strong immune response in our new whole blood assay. And if we use SIPB10, the new clinical um, sRNA, there's very little response. However, you can take SIPB8, which we consider to have this cryptic immune stimulation, and if you use a different uh, snout or lipid composition, you can actually blunt this uh, property somewhat. So to get the new clinical product, we had to change not only the sRNA, but also the cationic lipid, so that as a whole, the LNP would be less immunostimulatory. So in conclusion, uh, our experience with this first human trial was that LNP had a dose-limiting toxicity of flu-like symptoms resulting from stimulation of the innate immune response. We now have a modified, non-stimulatory sRNA for re-entry into the clinic. And our new SNL not only has this reduced toxicity profile, but also increased potency as demonstrated in non-human primate studies, and therefore we anticipate an improved therapeutic index. And finally, we have a new whole blood assay that more completely reflects the clinical response to sRNA drugs. Currently, we are enrolling trials 
for T uh, we are enrolling subjects into TKM 080301, which is our PLK Snell Phase One clinical trial. This is a multi-site U.S. trial. Um, it's essentially an all-comers trial for oncology. Uh, patients here will be receiving uh, a number of cycles. Each cycle will constitute three doses given one week apart each. And we have the option of tumor biopsies, which hopefully we can use to demonstrate RNAi in humans. And this is my last slide. Um, hopefully, we are working towards an IND filing for the TKM Ebola, and we will get into the clinic uh, either at near the end of this year or early next year. And this will be an interesting trial as well, because again, it is not a single dose trial. It will be um, a dose regimen of seven daily doses. So something different from the PLK trial. Thank you very much. <laughs>